Liam, I think it's fair to say we've all been fascinated with the story of Fat Tony. I'm talking about Tony. <laughs> You're brave Bell. now that he's in prison, aren't you, Bridget? <laughs> I was saving about him now. Uh, but we really have followed the trials and tribulations of Tony Mockbell, and there's an amazing new book out called Big Wig, The Remarkable Rise and Fall of Tony Mockbell. The journalist and author, a very brave man, is Liam Houlihan, and he joins us now. G'day, Liam. Good morning. I'm feeling less brave now that you're making a point of it. <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder with these stories, how do you get the real account uh, without risking your life? <laughs> <laughs> less and less brave every minute. Thanks, so, Richard. No, I um, I think things are relatively sort of safe and peaceful reporting on crime in Australia. It's been a long time, mm. if, if ever, that anyone's been harmed. And so you never were... Uh, no one ever contacted you during the writing or warned you against writing the book? Not, not in this. Um... I spoke to one of Tony's brothers at the the door of his house, and he was pretty. Um, he made a fairly compelling case, but it wasn't per- it wasn't personal <laughs> he made threats. Made a fairly compelling. It, it case. wasn't personal threats. It was just like you guys are ruining our lives in the media. Our kids have to go to school and they get teased, and and these sort of arguments actually rather than threatening arguments. Uh, he seems to me like, like obviously he was a bad drug dealer, etc. But he doesn't seem to be like one of the really nasty ones. Is that true? Tony. There's a chapter in the book, Fat Tony and the Gangland War, that looks into what, if any, connections he's had to murders. And what comes out of it is, is just that he's actually just a lot more sophisticated and lower profile. Uh, and while everyone else was sort of losing money and their life in the Gangland War, Tony was getting ahead and was involved, uh, um, but wasn't on the radar. Right. I think a lot of people's judgments of Tony Mockbell are based on the first Underbelly series. And is it not the case that because he still had trials open and uh, allegations uh, or charges pending he wasn't really thrown in it quite like the other characters were in that first underbelly series that's right these the dramas of the gangland wars are always written according to you know who's still alive and who's going to sue you mm. so you make yeah. the, the dead people the villains but um this book itself had three years of legal restrictions. Tony had 58 right. suppression orders on his identity. So, right. if he's, so he was the most suppressed man in Australian legal history. <laughs> if if you accidentally put his name in the newspaper or uh, say you yes. accidentally published this book within the last three years, we would have faced 58 charges of contempt of court. Uh, and he got... He got done with a two dollar wig. Yeah. Well, the wig, the police love the wig, of course. You know, yeah. There was great frivolity in the force uh, when he got nabbed in that wig. But Tony's still a little bit dirty about the wig. Tony still insists when he was handcuffed, it was sort of knocked askew on his on his oh. head, and it actually wasn't that bad. It was actually so he's still fighting that fighting that fight. Yeah. Right. I think you should fight other fights. <laughs> what is it? What is it about gangsters and tracksuits? Because. They love a good tracksuit, don't they, this lot? They do, and, and Tony was the pioneer of the tracksuit gang, <laughs> who, who they were called the tracksuit gang, and they'd go to the races and they'd all wear tracksuits. His brother, Horty, was on telly the other <laughs> night wearing a nice tracksuit. Um, and, he, uh, and they'd go to the racetrack and they'd wear tracksuits and they'd put these big plungers on mm. and they'd, there'd be 10 or 20 of them so the bookies didn't know there was a run on a horse mm, yeah. um, and that actually led to the banning of tracksuits for some race tracks in, <laughs> in right? Victoria yeah. but what about his lovely mother who said Tony's a very good boy Yes, uh, Laura is, uh, is Tony and all the boys are still the apple of her eye. She yes. says they're good boys, you know. The, she says the prison guards tell me they're good boys. Uh, Not something you necessarily want to be saying out proud mum, but, yeah. uh, uh, If you met, personally met Tony, you've, you've no, spoken to I've him? I've never met Tony. He's always been sort of in, incarcerated or being brought back from Greece during my time. <laughs> right. I've, um, I've had sort of dealings through some of his lawyers and this, you know, scores of his friends and lawyers and family quoted in yeah. the book. Big Wig, The Remarkable Rise and Fall of Tony Mockbell is definitely the book to get later. And particularly in Melbourne, Bridgie, because there are so yes. many, in fact, 90% of the book is full of local references. Mm. So as you read it, you can absolutely place mm. uh, where Tony and his associates or his family are yeah. at the time. Mm. Liam, thanks for joining us and good luck. Hope it goes well for you. Thanks for having me. That's thanks Liam Houlihan. Uh,